Let's all say amen. amen. I want to thank the Lord for blessing us to have this opportunity to come together, to not only fellowship with one another, but to study another portion of his word. Yes. And I was uh, telling, I think I was telling Brother Kuykendall, there's two, there's two, the two worst spots at any lectureship is the one before lunch, because they want you to hurry up and sit down so they can eat. And the one after lunch, because you got to preach extra hard to keep them awake. So I have the former, but I'm, I'm going to come and I'm going to say what uh, I have prepared to say. And again, I bring you greetings from the Delamo Church of Christ from Gardena, California. I brought my own amen section amen. with me. But although they can be a little quiet, I have my wife, Michelle. Raise your hand. Now, now, that, now the law says that's my sister-in-law, but the Lord says that's my sister and my brother, Lisa and Dwayne Kaline. My mom is behind them, and you already know that ugly one over there with the, with the red suit on. I'm the pretty twin. He's, he's, uh, he's all right. I also have my brothers that are here with us. And, uh, you know, I love these brothers. I love these guys. You know, we, 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 as, as Sean always says, we hang tight and we roll tight. And when people see us coming, they're like, oh boy, they go to them church of Christ folk. Here they come. Here they come. So let's get into our, uh, subject for the, for this morning. My topic that I was given says, if you don't have it, ask for it. From James chapter one and verse number five. So I'm thinking about the word if. Because he says, if you don't. Well, let me start by saying we should go up a little bit because that word if is a conjunction. So the word if is a conjunction. That means that something is coming after this. And the thing that is coming after this is based on a certain condition. Because the word if means it may happen. Or it may not happen. You know, if I do what God tells me to do, if I obey his commandments, if I stay on the straight and narrow path, I'm, I have an opportunity to go to heaven. But if my ways are the ways of evil and the ways of corruption and destruction and iniquity, I will go to hell. Amen. He says, if you don't have it, ask for it. Amen. People may say, I don't know why I don't have nothing. Did you ask for it? You know, I know people out there who want to uh, who want to eat, who want to have filet mignon on a spam budget. <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> Cross me. People want to live in a certain way, but don't have the means to do it. We need to work, to earn a living, to provide for our families. We want to be the CEO of a major corporation with absolutely no training whatsoever. We need a way to get to work. There's the bus. You can ride a bike. As far as for me, I got these two huge things at the end of my body. You got feet. We, we need to, a transportation to get somewhere. We want a Lamborghini. We need shelter over our heads. We want, well, I don't know about out here in California. In California, people want to live next to the Kardashians. I don't. I may burn their house down. But anyway, uh, so if we go back up to the beginning of the text, James says, my brethren, he says to count it all joy. Not if, not maybe. He says, when, 
when you have trials. Now, I'm going to talk to my military men for a second. Where's Brother Gay? Oh, there he is. Okay. Brother Sean, Brother Gay. I know there's, a, there's others, but I, 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 have a, I have a relationship with these two. So, Brother Sean, Brother Gay, when you joined the military, when you signed the paper and you said, I state your name, swear or affirm to solemnly, I solemnly swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Oh, I forgot about my brother. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you too. Anyway. All right. How many of you did you, how many did you know that said when, when, when a conflict happened, said, I didn't sign up for this? I didn't think when I joined the military to defend the, the United States that I would have to go to a war or a conflict. Then what did you sign up for? I didn't know that accepting the job as a janitor meant I had to sweep the floor. Well, what does a janitor do? So we have people who say, I didn't know that obeying the gospel and becoming a child of God, these things were going to happen to me. James said they will happen to you. These trials, they're challenges that come to us that will test our faith. They will test our resolve. They even affect the very decisions we make and how we handle them. That's what trials do. There's a saying that says if you're not going into something, you're coming out of something. That is the life of a Christian. But through faith and wisdom and our trust in God, we can overcome these things. The testing of our faith, it works patience. Some people have absolutely no patience whatsoever. None whatsoever. The minute something happens that doesn't go their way, they're ready to fight. So our faith is going to test how, we, how our patience is. We must have, let have patience have her perfect work. In other words, stop doing God's job. Amen. Stop doing God's job. You go up there with this big old sack of your burdens. You go dragging around. Uh, now I got to do it carefully because I got a bad back. Uh, Lord, please help me with this situation. I know if nobody can help me, you can. Lord, I'm giving it all. I'm leaving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Amen. All right, where was I? Ah. Mm. Mm. That's what we do. We tell the Lord, Lord, I give it over to you, but I'm going to help you out in the meantime. Guess what? God don't need your help. He don't need your help. So without our trust in God, wisdom cannot be attained. You have to trust in the Lord in order for the Lord to give you wisdom to receive it. We must believe in him who alone can give it to us. So he says in verse number five, if. If any of you lack wisdom, what does the word like mean? That means you don't have it. You're, with, you're without it. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, he says to let him ask of God. Who give it to all that give it to all men liberally. Liberally, God is generous. Amen. Amen. God is a generous God. God is a loving God. God is a caring God. God is generous. And guess what? He'll give it to you without judgment. You know how we do. I'll give it to you. But man, you forever in my pocket here. What if God said that to us? What if the Lord said, man, you are forever in my pocket? He gives it to all men generously or liberally or generously 
and he upbraideth not. He does not judge you. He will not shame you. Because we, you know how we are. We be like, man, every time I turn around, you over here. Just like uh, uh, now, just like the pop said in Friday at the beginning when he said every time I'm in the kitchen. You, don't y'all act like you don't know what movie I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, you don't seen it. You know, you don't seen both versions. Now, now, now y'all are getting us. You know, the one that they show on HBO and then the one they show on TNT where everything is bleeped out. Come on. You know, you've seen them both. But he said every time I'm in the kitchen. You in the kitchen. In the refrigerator, eating up all the food. What if God said to you, every time I'm in the, in the house, you in the house, asking me for something, begging me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. But he's generous in what he does. But we got, there's, oh, my goodness. Now, I know, Brother Walker, that, that's on me, that ain't on you. Because everybody think Brother Walker's sitting over here in the corner with a clicker. I'm going to take five minutes off of his time. <laughs> he says right after that, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. In other words, when you go to God, when you go to ask God for something, you should already have the confidence that he's going to give it to you. How many of your children came up, come up to you? When they were little or whatever, and they wanted something. And instead of flat out just asking for it, they got to butter you up. <laughs> oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. You a great father. I love you so much. You are so handsome. You take such good care of us. Uh, what do you want? Because I know you want something. Otherwise, you wouldn't try to butter me up. So when, when, when James is saying that, we got something to come to God to ask the Lord for something and say, Lord, if you got time, if you can put, squeeze it in your budget, you know, or possibly if, you know, I, if you're not too busy, God, can I it, have this? And then those without patience get mad when God don't give them what they want on their time frame. Do you, brothers and sisters, do y'all not know God answers all prayers? Some will say, well, God is not answering my prayers. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. The answer could be yes. The answer could be no. The answer could be not at this time. The answer could be when I feel that you are ready then it is yours. But there's, there's also, God is, I don't know what's going on. God is just not answering my prayers. He is. He is. He is. Then he says, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. In other words, he's got the Charlie Brown syndrome. Now, some of the younger, younger probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But we should, we know who Charlie Brown is, right? Charlie Brown's wishy-washy. Going this way, that way, maybe this, maybe that. Or as I like to say, they even got the Eeyore syndrome. Always walking around, woe is me. Like, the, like that's the, you're the only one this is happening to. But he says, those who do this, he said, for, not let, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. So if you go to the Lord without confidence, don't get mad when the results are not what you want. Then he says a double minded man. Uh Oh, he's unstable. Someone who's double minded. Is in conflict with themselves. A double minded man is always in conflict with himself or herself. I don't want to leave the sisters out. They say, see, I don't want you to see brothers. I told you. I told you. No, sisters, too. That a, a person who is double minded is constantly in conflict with themselves. In other words, just as Paul said, every time. Every time I try to do right. 
Evil is there. Always. And we have a saying that I, or what I like to say is if you don't think or you don't feel like the devil is after you, that's because he already got you. I love my wife. I chased her for a few years. Finally caught her. I wore her down. She's, she's shaking her head, but she know I'm right. I wore her down. She, <laughs> I'm gonna say she slowed down. She was like, hey, oh, wait a minute now. All right, hold on. Let me come on back, hit this way. And I'm not saying that I shouldn't do everything that I, that as a husband, to please my wife, because I do, but why would I go around say, continuing the chase when I already got her? If the devil already got you, he ain't worrying about chasing you no more. He already got you. Someone who's double, and he says he's unstable. Now, the word unstable here is talking about, it's just used to describe someone who's drunk. Now, don't y'all get quiet. Y'all weren't always Christians. You weren't always members of the church. The church. Y'all weren't always. But, it's, it, but you know someone. I know Sean knows. I, I, I know because I had been stationed with guys that you got to carry back to their room, to the dorm or whatever. And the next day they come to you and they say, what happened last night? <laughs> or they'll say, man, what did I do? That's unstable. How did I get here? Wait, you live here. How, what do you mean, how did you get here? But they are unstable, meaning that they, that, that they stagger. And that sounds like some, some of our brothers in the church today. And I'm, I'm talking to the preachers now. We got some that stagger. One minute they're this way. The next minute they're this way. The next minute they're this way. Got no direction. Can't settle on one thing or another. So he says, if you are unstable and and double-minded, he said you don't have a def you have, don't have a definite direction, and therefore you're unable to get anywhere. So, the, so, so James says, if you want it, ask for it. I'm just going to give you the point. I'm looking at the time. But the first point is, would it, why, why ask for it? Why ask for it? In other words, what, what is it that you're asking for? Why ask for it? Now, I'm talking to everybody. How many people do you know in your daily life who are not members of the Lord's church, who ask you to pray for them. Brother Crosby, I need you to pray for me. What am I praying for? That's number one. Come on, baby, you can say it. Who am I praying to? Who am I praying to? I need you to, Bobby, or they say to you, Bobby, I need you to pray to your God for me. What do you mean you need me to pray to my God for you? What are you asking for? Why, why even asking for it? He says, why ask for it? You know why you should ask for it? Because you lack it. You don't have it. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. He, it, that Jesus says, ask and you shall what? Receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock. In other words, closed mouths don't get fed. They don't. Closed mouths don't get fed. If you don't ask for it, how do you expect to get it? You can't get it unless you ask for it. Why? Because God will give it to you. God is generous. What does Ephesians 2 tell us? That God, who is what? He's rich. Rich. Rich in mercy. That means he got enough to go around for everybody. He got what you want. Why not just ask him for it? 
Don't be like, oh, well, Lord, you know, I know you got so I know you're trying to take care of Brother Walker and Tonto. But I need a little help, too. No, ask. He's generous. And he'll do it without partiality. He's not going to say, well, you know what? Sean Evans, the guru, is better than you. So I'm going to give him his part and part of your part. No, no, no. No, no, no. God is generous. He does it without judgment, without partiality. He'll do it without shaming us. And because God... Something's missing. Oh, I missed one. I did that wrong. When you lack it, I'm sorry, because you lack it, 1 Kings 3, 7 through 14. Solomon asked for wisdom. He could ask for anything in the world. But you know how we do. Lord, give me the riches. I'll learn, I'll learn, about, I'll learn how to handle this money afterward. There's a, it's a fact that people who win the lottery are broke within two years. No concept of money. Don't know how to handle it. So when 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 Abraham, I'm sorry, when Solomon asked God for wisdom, God said you could ask for anything. But because you asked for wisdom, not only am I going to give you the wisdom, but I'm going to give you all the things that you could have asked for and you didn't. You should ask for it. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, because God gives it to you generously without judgment or casting shame. Ephesians 2, 4 through 8, because uh, because. God will just he'll, he'll give it to you. And Jeremiah, he says in Jeremiah 29 that I, I got I got a plan for you. 29, 11 through 13. God said, I got a plan for you. I got plans for you. My plans for you is to have a good life. My plans for you is to uh, not only I lost my notes. Hold on just one moment. Oh, there it is. He says that I have plans for you. For your future and a hope. Because you have sought after me and you have found me, I'm going to take care of you. So why should you ask for it? What is your attitude in asking for it? We should ask for it without wavering. Matthew 21, 18 through 22, have faith without having doubt. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Don't worry about it when you ask. He says, be careful for nothing. That word careful means you worry too much. Got all that. You got a Lord that takes care of you, that wants to do for you. So he says, stop, uh, stop worrying. But when you do ask the Lord, you should ask the Lord with thanksgiving. Every time I pray to the Lord, I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't get up. I don't get up and pray and say, Lord, here, here's here's my agenda for the day. Here's my laundry list. This is what I want you to do for me. The Bible says that if a man does that, don't think he's going to get anything from the Lord. Those who won't those who waver won't receive anything. Mark, Mark 9, 17 to 24. The man said, Lord, I believe. But help thou my unbelief. In other words, I see what you did, Lord. I've seen what you've done, but I need you to help me to understand so I can I, I can believe it a little further. Take me a little further, Lord. Help me to understand a little further. He said, help thou my unbelief. Don't be double minded. Romans 7, 18 through 23. Some will not do right. And they'll choose to do wrong instead. It's right in front of you. I said, you know, I, sh- I probably shouldn't eat. Now, I'm an eater. You probably can't tell by looking at me. No, I'm an eater. I eat. You can ask, you can ask my brothers over there. I eat. I put it down. <laughs> but, but you look at it and you say, should I even eat that last donut? I don't already have five. Well, I didn't. I'm not talking about me, Ronnie. I said, <laughs> should I? And then he said, you know what? what what's, what's it going to hurt? It's just one more donut. People say, you know what? Should I, should, I, should I go to worship today? I ain't been in three months. 
Yeah, what's one more Sunday? Walker ain't gonna miss me. Even though Walker been looking for you for three months. My, my, where's his brother been? Say, so, yeah, what's it gonna hurt? I can miss one more Sunday. Yeah, I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna, I wanna become a member of the Lord's church. Or my favorite is the ones that say, I, I would have I would have made my confession this morning, but I'd rather do it tonight when there's less people. Or Wednesday night during Bible class. James says, we don't know what to, what's tomorrow. We don't know. He says it as a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. So then don't be unstable. Second Peter 2, 20 and 21. Some will return to their sinful and unstable ways. He said it would it would it would have been better if you didn't know a thing, anything about the gospel, about the Lord, about his church. If all you're going to do is turn back to who you were before and corrupt the very institution that the Lord created. So then he says that that, that it somebody mentioned it yesterday about the, 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 the now I don't know about I know I don't know about washing washing cows or sows. My dad my dad used to have a pig farm. He never washed an area one of them. They used to love rolling around in that mud. But it says that if you, it, you someone who washes the pig, who's like who may be trying to get this pig, you know, to like Charlotte's Web, taking it to the show or whatever. But all that pig wants to do is wallow in the mire. That's all it wants to do. You know why? Because that's its instinct. Its instinct says I shouldn't be like this. This is how I want to be. Those who turn who, those who are unstable and double minded say I want to be this way. But my instinct and my nature want me to be this way. So what we have to do is realize if when we ask the Lord for something, he's going to give it to us. There's benefits of having faith and wisdom in the Lord. Titus 2 tells us that the Lord teaches us to that on um, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. He teaches us how to live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. Another thing the Lord will know who is his. Second Timothy 2. Fifth, uh, fifth, 15 through 19, God sealed us. He sealed us, meaning that he put his stamp on us. People should say my dad put his stamp. All minors put stamps on their children because you can ke- you can tell a minor in a, in a crowd. Somebody even told me one Sunday, I knew you were a minor because I could recognize you from the back of your head. <laughs> you got that minor head. So God put his stamp on us. His foundation is sure. God will give all good and perfect gifts. James 3, 17 and 18. God gives gifts without partiality. He don't, he, I won't say he don't care who you are. He don't care who you think you are. God does not care who you think you are because he gives it to you without partiality. We will be doers of his word and we will always look into that perfect law of liberty. The man who looks into the perfect law of liberty. The Bible says this man will be blessed in his deed. I know I'm out of time. I'm sorry, y'all. I just told Brother Walker to slow mine down instead of speed mine up. But if you're here today and you, you know that being outside of the body of Christ means that you lack wisdom. Because some want salvation without following the steps for salvation. You will hear some, you will hear some, some, some so-called preachers in the, in the Lord's church talking about baptism is not essential to salvation. When the Lord himself showed us by his example, when John baptized him, if baptism was not essential, why did the Lord say to his apostles when he gave them the great commission to go teach and baptize and teach again? If it wasn't part of it, why then when, when on the day of Pentecost, when they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. There is no salvation in any other, any other. There is no other name 
under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself on that cruel cross of Calvary so that we could have redemption, so that we could have forgiveness, so that we could have uh, we could have remission for our sins. And the Lord came up with a plan. The Lord came up with a plan. Everything is great when you have a plan. If you if you do things just by, you know, making it up as you go, that's not a plan. The Lord had a plan. He said the first thing you must do is you must hear his word. You have to hear how Jesus Christ suffered, bled, was spat on, was mocked. All these things that it was was whipped, all these things that Jesus went through. You need to hear about that. Once you hear it in your mind, you have to believe it. And belief is more than just saying, oh, you know what? I believe we just I just talked about. He said, Lord, I believe, but help out my unbelief. It's more than just believing. You have to have obedience to God's word. That's why the Hebrew writer said without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible. You say, oh, I have faith in God. No, you don't. Because if you have faith in God, why is he saying that what you're doing is not pleasing in his sight? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarded them and diligently seek him. You must repent. That means as a, you have a change of mind, which will bring about a change of attitude, which will bring about a change of action. Amen. You are going to say, you know what, I, who I was, I don't want to be that person anymore. Amen. I don't want to be that person. Then we must confess that we believe Jesus Christ to be the son of the living God, just as the eunuch did with Philip when he said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? Philip said, if thou believest, thou mayest. He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. Amen. And then you must be buried in baptism. And as Paul said in Romans chapter, chapter six, as we are buried in baptism, just as Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall walk in newness of life. And if you're here today and you remember the Lord's church and you've been lacking in your own wisdom, you need to get it right. Tomorrow's not promised. We don't, the rest of this day is not even promised. Now, I know they said lunch is ready, but who knows if you're going to make it past lunch? We don't know. Or to lunch. What do we have to do? We, we have to be ready. But if you have sin on your back, you can't be ready. You got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. We have to repent of our sins. We must confess our faults one to another. Then we can pray one for another. The Bible says that you may be healed. You know, his sin is a sickness. That's why James says that you may be healed. Sin is a sickness. And you need to be healed. And he says, the, the, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. If you're here and you need the prayer, we are here and we will pray with you and we will pray for you. Message and invitation is yours as we now together stand and sing the song that's been prepared.